Hey guys, it's Danny. Alrighty, today we're gonna remain a little bit in the sphere of light and light intensity for orchids, but I'm gonna show you a few orchids that I presumed were high light, and judging by the family of orchids they belong to, they should have been high light, but they're not, and it's visible. So I'm gonna show you these orchids so you see how signs of too much light look like. And here I'm not gonna refer to sunburns because those things can happen to orchids which are indeed high light, but they simply were not adapted properly to the amount of light. And the best example that I have at the moment is the beautiful Ivanagara there. And I think Roger left me a comment about the Ivanagara. I didn't get a chance to reply yet, but yes, I agree, the Ivanagara is not a highlight Catlia orchid, or actually Catlia member. So let's get you in a little closer and look at the foliage. Now looking at the flowers that are just opening now, we cannot really tell that this is not a highlight orchid. I keep this one in my IKEA stand, which is right in front of my southern window, along with the other Catlias. And by all means, she did great, the flowers look spectacular, but I'm not very happy with the foliage, and let me show you why. Now, at this point, I think it's pretty easy to see that the foliage is lacking the green it should have. It's almost completely red at the moment. Now, it's not abnormal for some Calia orchids to obtain a little red tinge. Let me show you what I mean. Do you see this? Now, that's pretty normal, and Catlias in high light do display this. Some of them display freckles, and that's perfectly fine. But from that, to this, there's quite the difference. Now, this Kalia is not sunburned because the foliage, she is in my greenhouse and currently it's much cooler here than outside. And P.S. we're already experiencing over 25 degrees Celsius. So where the sun hits outside, it's pretty warm, but the greenhouse stays cool. So sunburn is out of the question, but you can see that the high intensity of the sun did have an impact on the foliage. Now, this is a pigment that actually protects the foliage and many orchids, particularly Catlia family orchids, do display it in high light. In moderate amounts, it's perfectly fine. It's also a cue for you to know that you're offering enough light, but extreme cases like this, well, that's a sign that this orchid really doesn't need all that much light. She is protected from it, she's not getting sunburned, she's blooming nicely, she's growing normally, so no problems of the sorts, but aesthetically wise, uh, not so good. Now let me show you an Ivanagara which didn't stay in the IKEA stand. And here she is, this is the Ivanagara that Ana Maria sent me, it's one of the ICU orchids, and she's bouncing back really, really well. So on the foliage, we can see moderate amounts of red pigment. That's totally normal. And the leaves have a much more pleasant color to them. Now, this location is still bright, but it's not quite near the window. From this, we can totally draw the conclusion that this is not necessarily such a highlight plant. And this is pretty good news because not many of us have a position in our homes or our growing space that benefits from that much light, like other Catlias or Catlia hybrids need. So from this point of view, the Ivanagara is an intermediate light for me. And after the other one is done blooming, I'm gonna definitely change her position. I might just move her lower on my IKEA stand. So if you want a really beautiful Calia type orchid, which is also fragrant, and by the way, this smells a little bit like freesias, and you don't have tremendous amounts of light, then there you go, the Ivanagara is actually a very good choice. Another member of the Calia family, which really doesn't enjoy all that much light, is the Calia Hawaiian Splash Leia. Now, when I purchased this one, there wasn't really enough information about it, and currently I'm not sure how this one is classified, if she's a highlight or an intermediate light, but I can tell you she's not a high highlight orchid. At the moment she's looking quite a lot better because she's residing lower on the shelf, but in the past, being that this is a Catlia, I offer pretty high light. And by highlight, I don't mean direct sunshine to burn her, but filtered sun just like I give the other Catlias. And she didn't look all that great. I do still have some remnants of that, Practically, she kind of looked like the Ivanagara, particularly on the back of the foliage. She was really, really, really pink, and it wasn't a decent moderate amount, she was full pink. Not to mention, some of the bulbs were pinkish and really sickly looking as well. So the moment that I moved her in a more intermediate light, she began to look a lot, lot better. We can still see very faint traces of red, but that is what we want, that's normal. If our orchid gets completely red, it's not necessarily that it's gonna kill it, it's not sunburning it, but it really doesn't look all that great. And yet again, it just means that this orchid is suited for those homes or environments which do not benefit of that much bright light. So this one again is a very suitable 
suitable candidate for intermediate light. I think if you have enough light for most non-cidiums, you should have enough light for this one. As for a very bright light, I really wouldn't give it to this one. She seems to do quite well. This is a hardy orchid, blooms very, very vigorously. And if it's not stressed, it will not skip any year. And it really doesn't need a lot of light to do so. Not to mention, it has a much more pleasant color now that she is now residing in such a full bright location. Another member of the No Highlight Club is a Vendacious Orchid. And yet again, Vanda Orchids are famous for their highlight demand. Well, not this one. This one was quite the big mistake from my part. I didn't do my whole homework, I didn't check out the parents and I kept her in the brightest light that I could along with my other Vandas. Well, they were fine, but this one was not and currently she is recovering. Last year she looked a lot more horrible than this, but right now things are starting to normalize. Now again with this orchid, it's normal to have some freckles, normal to have some red tinges, but not normal for this orchid to be completely red rather than green. Currently she is residing in a more shaded location, but I think this is still quite a lot. Even though it doesn't look like it, the color really has started to normalize. It was much worse than this and as you can see, I do have some sunburn on this one as well. The pigmentation does disappear in time, but it really doesn't happen overnight. So I'll see what this one does this year. Slowly but surely she is returning to normal, but still you can see she's a little bit too red for my liking. This orchid should not be all this red. And I don't know if I mentioned this one, this is the Rincaritas Bangkok Sunset. I'll add a link to more information about it in the description below. So yet again, keep in mind, even with very highlight orchids, it's always good to do your homework. And if you don't have a lot of information on a hybrid, check out the parents. You can do so on the RHS website and then look for information on the parents. If the parents are both lower or intermediate light, then the hybrid most probably is as well. And this is the case with the Rincaritas Bangkok Sunset. Now, for many highlight orchids, the red pigmentation is indeed a sign of highlight, but it's not generally applicable. Some orchids, although in my experience very few, have very light colored leaves and highlight. And I think the only ones that I've encountered like this are the Vandas. Currently, my Vandas are not too light in color because they are receiving adequate light. And somebody actually asked me what is the connection between the lighter leaves and sunlight. And quite honestly, I know this is a very popular belief or fact or opinion, I just didn't experience it. What I've experienced is that if an orchid is naturally light in color, it doesn't matter the quantity of light you subject it to, it will always be light in color. And let's turn to the Phalaenopsis right now. We can see that these are the complex hybrids and this is their natural color, which is darker green. And here we have a primary hybrid with the Violacea which is a species. Now, Phalaenopsis species, particularly the summer blooming ones, do have a lighter foliage, and this is very normal. Now, this orchid received Phalaenopsis light, nowhere near bright light, and as you can see, the foliage is light in color. So this has nothing to do with the amount of light. I do believe that the natural pigmentation has a heavier word than the sun exposure. Uh, but then again, you saw the red orchids. Those are clearly exposed to too much light. Some orchids will simply display a lot of freckles without the red pigmentation, while others will simply not display anything and will go directly to being sunburned. And this is the case of the complex hybrid Phalaenopsis orchids. With those orchids, I've actually never experienced light colored leaves because of too much sun exposure or bright light. I went directly to sunburn, so be careful with that. Overall, I don't think the pigmentation or the color of leaves is always an indication of light. Red pigmentation can also be obtained by some lack of nutrients as well as low temperatures. And light colored leaves, yet again, can be a sign of some disease, even some pests, or simple nutrient deficiency. So when assessing the situation of an orchid, I think it's better to think of all of the factors and how you actually treated the orchid before you link it to, oh, it's light, it should be the light. In many cases, it is light, but before we reach light, I think we should check temperature and nutrients first. Unless we have an orchid that we keep in full sun. Other than that, I'm pretty happy to report that I don't have light issues, I don't have sunburns, except for the Vanagara, the Hawaiian Splash Leia, and the Rincaritas Bangkok Sunset. These orchids completely caught me off guard and even though they are or they're supposed to be pretty highlight orchids, it appears they're not, so be careful with them and take them as potential candidates if you don't have super bright light in your location. So alrighty guys, thank you for watching this video, short and sweet today, it is Friday. 
the weekend is coming, so I wish you all a very nice weekend. Enjoy it and relax as much as you can, and we'll see each other next time. Thank you for watching. Hope you've enjoyed it. If you did, give it a thumbs up. If you hated it, give it a thumbs down. Subscribe to my channel for regular orchids and plants videos, and don't forget to turn on notifications so you never miss a video. And with that said, I'll see you all next time. Bye! Now you laugh, but I saw this this morning and I gasped. This is a pretty sad sight to see, but the blooming period of this beautiful Phragmopedium is coming to an end. Now for me this time the flowers were not long lasting, I'm not sure how long they're supposed to stay in bloom, but for me they were here for about a month, maybe a little more than a month. But I've enjoyed them, I am really looking forward to the other fans right now and hopefully they will bloom as well, because this is truly a beautiful orchid.